Hi everyone, it's Dr. Romani. Welcome back to this YouTube channel on narcissism. And I say this a little bit like I've just bit a lemon. Happy Father's Day. Whatever, Father's Day, right? And you know how I feel about these. Let's just celebrate a group of people for the sake of celebrating a group of people. Yeah, I understand it's all commercialized and all of that. But when I think about survivors on these particular days, particularly the Mother's Day and Father's Day, these are complicated days. For the longest time when I did this work, there was no social media, right? So it wasn't a thing. Now it's a thing. And I would say that for any of you for whom Father's Day just feels like a difficult day, one of the best places to start is to shut the social media down on, on today, on Father's Day. Because I think for many, many people, and this is something I see on all of these kinds of aren't families great holidays, is that there's such a, a sense of grief, sometimes a sense of shame, maybe even self-blame on these days. So it's almost better to not see it. Father's Day is a tough one because here's where it gets interesting. If we take, if we look at it just from a point of view of straight math, right? We know that more narcissists, there are more men who are narcissistic than women, at least when we're talking about grandiose and malignant narcissism, vulnerable narcissism, more equal between men and women. But when it comes to grandiose and malignant and self-righteous narcissism, it's definitely more men than women, which means if this was your parent, odds are it was your father. Not necessarily There's plenty of you watching this saying, girl, now I'll have a narcissistic mother and I got you. But the fact is just from a straight probability basis, Father's Day might even be tougher when it comes to the world of narcissistic parents, because not only are men more likely to be narcissistic, it, those impacts may be felt in a, um, in a very different way. Fatherhood's an incredibly, incredibly powerful role, powerful role in a person's life. And I think we often underestimate that. Up until more recent generations, fathers were very checked out. Their role in children's lives as active players in their children's lives wasn't even socially you know, valued or reinforced. It was a sort of a very traditional kind of heteronormative gendered model where men would make money and women would do the caretaking. And that's actually been a model from time immemorial where mothers often had more to do with direct caregiving per se, with almost no expectation of that from men and fathers, right? And yet, despite that, I don't think we can understate the power of fatherhood. And I feel very strongly about that. You know, I have to say that with, with some envy, I say this, that many women I most admire who actually came to their professional footing a lot earlier than I ever did with a confidence I never had, had very, very supportive relationships with fathers, the, the power of fatherhood to sort of shape their daughters is extraordinary. And their sons, obviously, we always think about fathers and sons, but we really, really miss how impactful fathers are on daughters. So if you have a narcissistic father, that's a really, really bad setup. I'm going to start by talking about women first. And you know, I'm talking about gender in, the, in a binary format right now, just because that's where the research has been up to now. But when we think of it for how fatherhood shapes women, I mean, the list is, is the list is almost endless and in some ways almost more impactful because what ends up happening is if a woman has a narcissistic father, right? So, and what we classically see is sort of the invalidating, critical, unavailable, neglectful, manipulative, gaslighting father. That's one hell of a bad template to give a girl and then a woman. So, you know, again, heteronormative, I acknowledge that, but I think this would, this would even apply to, to all relationships, straight, queer, you name it, that when that woman goes out into the world and is now searching out relationships because of the, the power and dominance brought by men in a home, like in a father, that may end up with relationship choices that sort of reflect that trauma bonded relationship with the dad. And that can get dangerous and risky, as we know. And so that's what I'm saying, like we can't underestimate this power. Even if the father was nowhere to be found, that absent father really creates a really problematic dynamic for women. But again, and for men, very much so. There's that whole idea of like a, a, a boy wanting to identify with a father figure. But if that father is negating, invalidating, humiliating, dehumanizing, it absolutely does a number on a man. And when I look at, you know, when I, and I've worked with many, many clients, male clients over the years, and the power of that father relationship, I, I can't, again, I can't understate it. I, I really can't. So 
you know, there, there's these, these major dynamic issues that come from fatherhood. When it's a narcissistic father, I really think it can, sh- it can shape a future in a really rather permanent way. So that's just a long way of saying fathers are incredibly complicated and narcissistic fathers are kind of a disaster. And so on this day when everyone is supposed to revel in it, I can't tell you how many people have told me where they're just sort of staring at the at the phone and saying, I just don't want to talk to this person today. And it's Father's Day, so I'm supposed to. And some people may go months and months and months not having spoken to a toxic father. But on Father's Day, some sense of guilt or duty or obligation leads people to pick up that phone. And they'll often say that one phone call set them back months. Just because someone says it's Father's Day doesn't mean you have to put your healing and your progress back. These relationships shaped you. And for years, many of us spend, honestly, lifetimes trying to undo that negative self-talk, strip it out of our brains, because every time we're left with it, we're, we're facing an ambiguous situation or complicated situation. Immediately we go to the, I'm not enough, or what am I doing? Or, you know, who do I think I am? And all of that negating talk that many of us internalized from really narcissistic fathers. So on any of these days, I often view Mother's Day, Father's Day, or any number of of sort of, you know, invalidating shame inducing holidays out there as days where actually, instead of letting these be days you fall backwards, can they be days you fall forwards, that this is a day you say, you know what, I'm turn my social media off anyhow today. What can I do for me today? What can I do to shore myself up? For some of you, it might be like, okay, I wasn't cherished or cared for or valued by a father, or in fact, might have even been neglected, invalidated, or abused. So I'm going to go out into the world and be some the opposite of that to people I care for. Maybe children in your midst, nieces, nephews, your own kids, other kids that you you just you know, maybe through your church or something like that, to be with those kids and sort of be a model of a really genuine, authentic, compassionate strength can look like. You can take care of you. You can father yourself on Father's Day. Maybe you did want your father to do certain things with you. You had a hope that they would give you that time. Give yourself that time. Now, it is hard to play catch with yourself. I'll give you that, but you could go to a batting cage. But do something where you say, nah, you know what? If I need to be this role to myself, I'm going to be this role to myself. And I think that when we sort of embrace these days and say, damn it, this part of my effing narrative is not going to break me. I am going to come back from this and I'm going to realize that even despite that, even despite being let down by a father, I can take this back and I can go out there and I can kick some ass that that's what you can use Father's Day for and not wasting time and money on a stamp or a letter or a call that might set you back. If you want to do it, you want to send the card, you want to do the call, then you do what feels right to you, but only if it feels right to you and not because you think this year is going to be different and they're going to respond differently. They're never going to respond differently. The only thing that can change is your mindset going into it and saying, yeah, you know what? I'm going to send the card or I am going to send the text message because that's something that feels authentic to me. But you can also take that back. You can father yourself. And I don't care what your gender identity is. Any of us can father ourselves. Whatever fathering means to you it means different things to different people. But that's how I want you to view these holidays. Way too many people have had their sense of self, their identity, meaning and purpose hijacked by toxic parents. It's stopping, pausing, recognizing, grieving what wasn't, what you didn't get. But then, like I said, realizing that you can actually do some of this for yourself and that you did develop quite a strength that you had to come through perhaps without somebody in this fathering role and take care of you on Father's Day. Trust you me, I'll be here reminding you of all these damned holidays that are always supposed to be so Instagram perfect. It's okay if tomorrow, maybe what you end up doing is what you really hoped fatherhood would have been in your life. But even if it wasn't, we can always be those things to ourselves. So I say to you, 
happy Father's Day to all of you who are doing that for yourselves. And then for those of you who are the good dads out there who are being good dads, despite not having that for yourself, that's really, it's really impressive and embrace that you are ending these intergenerational cycles. So to you, to that group of you, I do say happy Father's Day. So be kind to yourself. I'll certainly be trying to do that for myself today. And to everyone, thanks again.